Why are you crying? This is your doing. You said you'd rather feel pain yourself than inflict it on others. You choose to be neutral. But you know what happens when you play both sides? In the end, everybody loses. You saw what happened with your mother. Why couldn't you just live for me? You had a choice! Why didn't you choose me?! Even if it meant forsaking your aunt? Yes, if she'd be here now! Even if it meant hurting her? If it had to be done! Even if it meant killing her? Whatever it takes! Learn the lesson your mother couldn't seem to grasp. That sometimes, to protect one thing, you have to have the resolve to let go of another. But you're not weak like she was. You have the power to break this chain of grief. Anyone who tries to take them from me will get no mercy. And what if your decision ends up being the wrong one in the end? That won't happen because I'm not wrong. What's wrong is this messed up world. <laughs> In the Shinobi world, it's not how you live, it's how you die. A Shinobi's life is not measured by how they live, but rather it's measured by what they manage to accomplish before their death. My life has really been full of nothing but failure, continually rejected by Tsunade, unable to stop my friend, and unable to protect either my student or my mentor. Compared to the great and celebrated deeds of the Hokage, my actions are trifling, insignificant things indeed. I wish that I could have died like each of the Hokage. The tale is only as good as its final turn of events. The plot twist. And mistakes are an important part of the plot too. I've lived my life always believing that the lessons I learned are what honed me. I swore I'd accomplish a deed so great that it would obliterate all my failures. I die, a splendid shinobi. At least that's how it was supposed to go. But this, my plot twist, my tale ending like this. The great Lord Elder prophesied that I would be the one to guide a revolution, a person who will make a great choice that will bring either peace or destruction to the world of the shinobi. I thought I would defeat pain, stop the Akatsuki, and save the world from destruction. But in the end, I failed that too. How pitiful. How sad that this will be the ending twist to the tale of Jiraiya the Gallant. What a worthless story it turned out to be. You don't get it. Trust is the same thing as reliance. It's a fault of cowards. I have no need for such weakness. I have many subordinates, many who've pledged themselves to me, but I've never asked for any of their trust. I've asked for their allegiance, but faith is another matter altogether. In fact, I always told them to never trust anyone, including myself. Unfortunately though, I've met no one who is strong enough to actually heed that warning. All creatures need to obey. No one can survive without trusting someone. Someone they feel is better, more worthy than themselves. To avoid that responsibility, those who are worthy look even higher, searching for more superior beings. And those superiors do the same, looking for even stronger individuals they can believe in. That is how all kings are created. It is also how gods are born. She decided to die at the hands of someone she loved to protect the hidden leaf. No matter what words you say, to me the you who could not protect Reen is an imposter. To me, Reen is someone not meant to die. So the dead Reen is also an imposter. 
Reen is only Reen alive. The Shinobi system, the village, Shinobi themselves, they created these circumstances. What caused me to despair is this world itself, this counterfeit world. Look at me. There's nothing in my heart. I don't feel pain any longer. There's no need to feel guilty, Kakashi. This hole was opened up by this world of hell. I only had pain inside here before. But really, what's the meaning in that? So I abandoned it all. Meanwhile, you have suffered all this time. At Reen's grave. And mine as well. Come here, lad. Let us speak one last time. Very soon, I'll be dead. <laughs> Before that happens, I need you to hear me out. I have a younger brother named Senjuro. Please tell him to follow his heart and walk down the path he feels is right. And tell my father that I want him to look after himself. If you are feeling disheartened, that you are somehow not enough, set your heart ablaze. <laughs> Dry your eyes and look ahead. You may feel like digging your heels in, but the flow of time waits for no one. It won't patiently stand by as you grieve. Don't feel bad that I'm going to die. As a Hashira, it's natural I'd protect you all. The young buds must be allowed to bloom. Any other Hashira would have done the same as I. Young Kamado. Young Boar. Boy of Yellow. You must continue to grow. <laughs> Oh man, she's a peach. Sounds like she wants everything. My kind of girl. That kind of wanting is dangerous. It's not how reality works. I disagree. You want to bring back someone that you've lost. You might want money. Maybe you want women. Or you might want to protect the world. These are all common things people want. Things that their hearts desire. Greed may not be good, but it's not so bad either. You humans think greed is just for money and power, but everyone wants something they don't have. Youth is a lie. It is nothing but evil. Those who look to rejoice in their youth deceive themselves and those around them. Accepting in full the circumstances that devour them in the face of the great and reverend word youth, they will twist any common interpretation or accepted notion out of recognition. In their minds, lies, secrets, sins, and even failure are nothing more than the spice of youth. If failure is truly the designated mark of one's youth, then would it not be considered abnormal for one not in his youth to still fail at befriending anyone? But I'm sure none of them would admit to that being true. They only define youth to their own benefit. In conclusion, I leave you with this. All you fools who delight in youth, drop dead.